Hi there, scholars. I have another read aloud for you this week. This read aloud is super, super special. It's a very beautiful story called A Letter to My Teacher, and it's written by Deborah Hopkinson, and the pictures are by Nancy Carpenter. This is a really nice story because it's about a little girl and her second grade teacher and just the impact that her teacher has had on her life. And right now that we're not physically in school, I mean, we're doing distance learning, but we're not able to see our teachers' faces and just how you love your teachers so much, your teachers love you too. So this is a really, really beautiful story about the bond between teachers and students. I hope you love it. A letter to my teacher. Dear teacher, whenever I have something to tell you, I tugged on your shirt and whispered in your ear, this time I'm writing a letter. I hope you remember me. I was the one who marched to school that first day, splashing through every puddle I could find. I wore a bright yellow raincoat and a dark stormy frown because for me, school meant sitting still and listening. Two things I wasn't much good at. I stood there ornery and dripping, just sure I'd get in trouble. But instead, you grinned at me. Good morning. Look at you standing there like Mary Kingsley, just back from canoeing up the Ogogwe River. Who? I said, where? Mary Kingsley, the fearless explorer, you explained. Someday we'll read about her and crocodiles. Now get them off, crocodiles. After taking attendance, you made a big announcement. Welcome. This year, we'll be planting the first ever second grade garden. It will be our great experiment. Yay, we get to dig in the mud, I shouted. True, but first, we read about plants, you said. We'll use math to measure our plot, and we'll write our garden plant. Reading, math, writing? I was better at running and jumping. The next week, we visited the creek behind the school to learn about plants and water. When you weren't watching, I started to hop the rocks. Right in the middle, I got stuck. Look at me, I'm Mary, what's her name? I hollered, trying to sound brave. Watch out for crocodiles, you yelled back. Then you rushed to rescue me. On the way back, you held my hand and never told anyone how much I was shaking. All fall, I tried to sit still. Right before Thanksgiving vacation, you asked who wanted to take the Mouse Brothers home. Me, pick me, I shouted. But while I was busy eating turkey, my cat Lucy ate one brother. I bought a replacement mouse, except I just couldn't tell you. One day when we were cleaning their cage, you called me over to your desk and told me that we might have to change the brothers' names to Ma and Pa Mouse. You knew the whole time, I said. Laughing, you said, might as well get used to it. Teachers see everything. They really do see everything. When winter came, the reading corner became our secret garden of stories. On Friday afternoons, we all curled up in a heap to listen, just like our new litter of mice. I loved it when you read to us, and we always begged for more. But I hated being called on to read out loud. I kept tripping over the words. Once, right before my turn, I yelled, Raise your hand if you want to go home. Another time, I clutched my throat and croaked, oh. I lost my voice. Nothing fooled you, though. You called me to your desk and asked, When we make our garden, do you think the seeds will grow right away? No, I said. Everybody knows that they need time and sun and water. Well, learning to read takes time, too, you said. Now, I think you have a cat. I nodded. Lucy, the one who likes mice. I'd like to read, I'd like you to read to Lucy every day, you suggested. 
It might keep her out of trouble. I giggled. Maybe I'll read her Puss in Boots. I practiced hard and you gave me extra help too. One day you brought me a special book. I met a real author and he autographed it just for you. I looked at the cover and sounded out the words. Wow, it's about her, that explorer, Mary Kingsley. You smiled. Next week you can share it with the class. In March, we explored our town. We went on a field trip to an old house. It was full of history and secret stairways. When I slipped away to look for a hidden treasure in the root cellar, you and the whole class had to trudge down the old stone steps to find me. I think you even lost your patience that time. Exasperating was the word you used. I remember because that night my mom helped me look it up in the dictionary. The day you brought in seeds for us to choose, I tugged on your shirt. Can we plant this kind? The packet says early spring. We can have bright red radishes in just a few weeks. Good reading and great idea, you said. Thanks to the math games we played, measuring our garden patch was easy. At last, we turned over our soil and we were ready to plant. I was radish crew chief and read out all the instructions, all by myself. All spring, we weeded and watered and kept garden journals, too. On that Friday before summer vacation, we wrote out invitations to every class to come join the salad we'd grown ourselves. Splendid spinach, said the principal. It's because of the worms, I explained. I didn't know how to say thank you, so on the last day I gave you a present, a memory quilt. I'd measured squares on paper and made the story of our year in each one. The reading corner, worms in our compost, the magnificent mouse family, and best of all, a picture of you and me. You looked at the quilt a long time then held it up for everyone to see. Thank you. Now I'll never forget you all and the year of the second grade garden. Me neither, I promised, and I never have. For a long, night, a long time now, I've been waiting to write to tell you that even though I didn't always listen and I know I was exasperating, second grade really was the best year ever. So, I guess you won't be too surprised to hear that I still like to stomp through creeks, dig in the garden, and even read out loud to my cat. Most of all, I want to tell you that I'm about to start my first job. And tomorrow morning when I go to work, I'll think about everything you helped me explore and try my best to be like you. Thank you for being my teacher your student. What a lovely, lovely story. I have a really fun activity for you that's related to this story. So here's what the activity looks like. Since we read this story, a letter to my teacher, I thought it would be a good idea for you to write a letter to your teacher and thanking them for all the things that they've taught you and maybe sharing some special memories with them. So that is your writing task for the week is to write a letter to your teacher. So let's review the parts of a letter. When you structure your letter, the first part is the heading. This is where you write the date. You want to make sure that you write out the month, the day, and the year. The next part of the letter is the greeting. So this is where you begin to uh, write your letter and we usually start it off with dear and then you address the person. So dear Miss Lopez or dear Mrs. Brissett, make sure that after you've written the name of your teacher, you put a comma. The main part of the letter is the body. So this is where you're going to be writing your kind of thank you note to your teacher. Make sure that your very first sentence that you indent. So usually I'd like to put maybe about three finger spaces when I indent. 
When you write the body, you want to be super detailed. You want to write a nice thank you letter to your teacher. So here are some steps that you can follow to write the body of your letter. Say thank you, right? So you want to start off your letter by thanking your teacher. Um, step two, get specific. So try to come up with at least three things that you want to thank your teacher for and be very detailed. Step three, keep the tone friendly. So you want your letter to have a friendly tone, meaning you want to use friendly words. Step four, include the appropriate greetings and signatures. So like we talked about, the greeting is the first part of the letter where you open the letter. And then when you close it, you close with um, the closing and you might want to use something like love or sincerely. When you write your closing, you want to make sure that you also include a comma, just like how you did in the greeting. And lastly is the signature. This is where you write your name. I will be posting um, letter paper on Google Classroom where you can write your letter to your teacher. That's if you have access to a printer. And if you don't, that's totally okay. You can get a nice piece of paper and write your letter to your teacher. So I want you to work on that this week for writing. You'll go through the writing process where you'll draft your letter, you'll revise, edit, and then finally publish on your paper. And then I would like for you to post your letter on Dojo. If your teacher doesn't have Dojo, maybe you can send them um, a picture of your letter like via email. Your parents can maybe text them the letter. And you could also do a bonus activity where you can create a, a video using maybe iMovie of you reading your letter to your teacher. I cannot wait to read all of your letters.